Good evening and welcome to Sports Reports. Tonight we'll be catching up with Annie Riso from Special Olympics Gibraltar after their return from the European Summer Games in Belgium. But first, John brings us this report on Gibraltar's latest UEFA Euro qualifiers. After a well-documented second 7-0 defeat in a row at the weekend, this time to Ireland, Gibraltar national manager Alan Buller was in a far more subdued mood at the pre-match press conference ahead of Gibraltar's second game in four days against Georgia. With his words at the press gathering appearing to show a major change in his outlook towards the remainder of the Group D matches. Um, we are the smallest nation there is. And uh, my players were going to come up against the giants of the world. Um, and it's not just about working um, technically or tactically with my players. The psychology behind it was a major factor. And I needed my players to stop believing in themselves um, and to, to help them confront what was, what was going to happen. Um, they've gone through all the bad moments. That, um, that I knew we were all going to go through. Um, and after, after going through that, after seeing that um, um, many people in my own nation are criticising me for saying things like that, um, from now on it's going to be the truth. No, we're, we're not going to get to the players. But like I've told my players now, enough is enough, you know. They're going to go out and enjoy now the experience. And all we can do is try and minimise the score. But from tomorrow, my players will enjoy football. You know, um, and I expected people to help us, being such a small nation, uh, but it's worked out differently. You know, so they don't deserve this. Um, I don't deserve it. My technical team doesn't deserve it. So for, as from tomorrow, we're going out to... To, to enjoy ourselves and realistically, no, we're not going to get to the playoffs and we're just going to try and minimise the score. The team arrived in Faro directly from Dublin on Sunday, were on the training pitch almost immediately. With several sessions under their belt, they arrived at the Estadio Algarve just after five for the team, seeing five changes from the team that had lined up against Ireland last Saturday. In came goalkeeper Jamie Roma for first start. Gian Carlos Garcia also made his first full start at the wafer level. Carl Cassiara returned after missing the Dublin game. Robert Geeling and Jogan Santos also made starts after impressing at the weekend when they entered the pitch as substitutes. There was also a change of captain with Roy Cipollina having dropped to the bench. The armband was passed to club colleague Joseph Cipollina. After the formalities, the match got underway with Gibraltar starting brightly. On six minutes, Joseph Cipollina produced Gibraltar's first effort on goal, but the attempt was blocked. Three minutes later, the curse of the early goal struck again, with Geshvili sliding the ball past Rober in the Gibraltar goal after being put through. Despite going behind early on, Gibraltar regrouped and began to create more, with two chances in quick succession on 17 minutes. However, within two minutes, Gibraltar's endeavours going forward were undone as Georgia extended their relief through Oscavilli, given too much space in front of goal when he slotted home past the advancing jib keeper. Again, Gibraltar regrouped and for the remainder of the first half matched their Eastern European opponents, creating half chances and defending well. With the Georgian's only other chance of note coming as half-time approached with Jamie Rober turning the ball onto the bar and the Gibraltar defence clearing their lines. Carl Cassiaro failed to reappear after the break with Adam Priestley entering the fray. The UK-based Priestley began brightly and linked up well with Lee Cassiaro several times in the opening exchanges of the second period. And it was the Lincoln frontman who nearly pulled a goal back for Gibraltar on 51 minutes, but his effort was saved by the Georgian number one. With Gibraltar on the hunt, disaster struck on 70 minutes with Gavana firing past Robber to make it 3-0. Buller made his final two changes on 75 minutes with Gosling replacing Geeling and team captain Cipollina coming on for Santos. Gibraltar had the ball in the net on 81 minutes with Joseph Cipollina finding the net from a walker corner, but the Austrian official somehow ruled the goal out for an infringement made by Roy Cipollina at the far post. Gibraltar battled to the end, but were again to leave the field of play with nothing to show for their efforts. After the match, I caught up with Scott Wiseman and Jamie Roman, but first spoke to Alan Buller's second in command, David Wilson. We're um, slightly more disappointed tonight, strangely enough, because I felt that we had a chance to 
go and express ourselves a little bit more. But they've done well. They've, they've defended well in, in areas. Still sloppy. Still giving away sloppy goals. Really crucial times in the match. Um, but other than that, yeah, we, we showed that we can go and play. We've, it's disappointing because we've got so much more to give. Um, but after the two results, we needed to go and try and just put in a steadier performance. Germany next. Of course it hurts us. We wouldn't be sportsmen, we wouldn't be footballers, we didn't hurt us. Defeat like that, no matter who you are and what's expected of you, a 7-0 defeat is hard to take. And if you don't take it hard, I think you're in the wrong job and you're in the wrong profession. So the fact that the lads took it hard, it's, it's a good thing. It means they care, it means that they want to do better. And we did, and I think we've worked hard on the training field, we've trained twice a day. And I think they have improved, I think they have improved as a team, as a unit, and as a squad. Well, it's basically a dream come true. I mean, I was looking forward to the game the whole day, but... Once you get on the pitch, the first five minutes are just nerves everywhere. It's overwhelming. But uh, you also get into the game, game, you grow into the game. First save was vital. So, yeah, felt good. Disappointed uh, to have conceded three. Um, anything you could have done, potentially? You can always do a bit better. I mean, I'm very critical of myself and you can always do a bit better. I mean, the first one, I think, yeah, I could have held up a bit more, maybe made myself bigger. Second one just creeped up under my legs. The third one, sorry, yeah, but you can always do better, but just take the positives. Right now, that's another for another day. Right now, just, I think, the good performance, so just take that in. As we mentioned at the start of the programme, Special Olympics Gibraltar have recently returned from another successful trip. This time, it was the European Summer Games held in Belgium. The team of nine were again great ambassadors for the Rock, bringing back some medals in the process. I spoke to head of the Gibraltar delegation, Annie Riso, at the Mini Olympiad last week, and she brought me up to speed with the whole trip. Well, brilliant. There were 58 uh, countries, you know, the whole of Europe was there. We were representing um, in three, three uh, events, which were swimming, aquatics and bocce. Uh, so we had 10 athletes participating, and uh, frankly we did so, you know, they did so well. Yeah. And obviously uh, aquatics, swimming and athletics are, are two sports which are sort of well integrated into, into Gibraltarian society in general, and let alone with, with you guys. Uh, but Boche is uh, slightly new, it's only the second time that you've uh, gone away to, to compete internationally in Boche, so how did the, the athletes find that? Well, I mean, we were only allowed two, because, you know, obviously it's the quotas. We had four for swimming and we had four for athletics, sorry, three for athletics and we had two for, for Boche. And... Um, okay. With the two, we were able to take singles and doubles, and they did brilliantly in the doubles because they took a bronze medal in the, in the doubles. Um, singles, they didn't do as well. Uh, they came fourth. Uh, one of them came fourth, the other one came, they came seventh. But, but we were so delighted to see both of them in the doubles doing so, so well, yeah. And obviously, uh, results and medals aren't the, the most important thing in these games. Obviously, the, the oath being, let me win, and if I can't, let me be brave in the attempt. Uh, but some very good results coming back, and even some medals. Well, me medals, are, you know, we always say that, but obviously they're going there, and they, they want to get the medals. So when the first uh, gold medal rolled in, which was uh, Nigel Baglietto, and he's a newcomer, it's the first time he's ever participated away from Gibraltar. And he did his 200 metres run so brilliantly and took the gold medal. We were, you know, over the, over the moon. And then our next gold medal was, um, it was JJ in his backstroke. Uh, and swimming did so well. I mean, swimming, it was incredible. And, um, it, it, I mean, the ones that don't, may not have got a medal, if you look at their times, they've broken their personal best. And, I mean, that's all we want from our athletes, that when they leave Gibraltar, that they give of the best, as you quoted from the, the <laughs> our usual uh, oath. And obviously, um, performance, uh, again, is, is important to, to the athletes themselves, but um, a lot of hard work is put in from, by the athletes, obviously the coaches as well. And, and these big events, the European Summer Games, the, the World Summer Games, uh, even the, the home uh, Special Olympics, uh, Gibraltar, they're, they're big events for the athletes and they really relish the opportunity to represent the nation. Remember, everything today is computerised. And uh, even though we're training in our own countries, that all got, goes into the main... Um, whatever, which is in Washington. Now, this is, you know, finally looked at. If, if they see athletes are not progressing in their countries, you know, we get a tap on our knuckles and say, you know, what is happening, you know, with your athletics? You know, why, why aren't you progressing? Or why is the, you know, the aquatics slowing down? Or So, 
you know, we, we, we're not alone here. I mean, we're not training our athletes on our own here to our own level. We're training, you know, the athletes to the level that they can, but we're always being told to, you know, push them that bit further. So, I mean, my hat goes off to our coaches because they, 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 they do a brilliant job. Our athletes who want to do it because, you know, that, that at the end of the day, uh, sometimes it's, uh, I mean, athletics, if you're not competing, you're out on the, you know, it's all like uh, laps and laps and laps. Yet they're down there and they're doing it because they know that at the end, they're going to, you know, the, their hard work is going to reap in what has happened in Belgium because they've reaped in really good scores. And finally, Annie, looking ahead now, what's next for Special Olympics Gibraltar? Wow, yes. Well, we're off on the 29th, hopefully, to Barcelona because uh, the, they're having their national uh, games there and we thought we might get out of it. Not that we wanted to, but it was so near to Belgium. But they've insisted they want us there. So we're going and we're taking a, a, a for beginners floor hockey, preparing for 2017, which will be the winter, winter Games in Austria. But our biggest, uh, I mean, our biggest uh, push now is for LA. It's the World World Summer Games in uh, Los Angeles in July, August. Uh, the team will be, uh, there'll be 28 athletes uh, traveling. The team will be 41. Um, we, they have to be world-class coached, let's put it that way. And that, that is, you know, that is said quite clearly. So coaches have a hard task ahead of them and our athletes uh, who don't know who has been selected but in the next two weeks they will know so when you know they'll have to put that extra mile in.